how are you? What a perfect day to be out here. Good to see you. Uh, but no, I walked in and immediately remembered 20 some odd years ago being in here when at one I first of your bonfires. You. Yeah, it's the first time I was out here. Six years. Yeah. 26 years ago. So crazy. Yeah, I remember sitting in this room till the wee hours with everybody playing songs. Alright, here we go. One, two. Hello. I think the first record that really spoke to me of Riches was the Jesus demos, but it immediately reminded me of like the great American songwriters like Woody Guthrie just playing his guitar, Bob Dylan. And what if we reapproached some of his songs almost in that demo style? And then we thought, well, what if we take it a step further and try to get a hold of the lady that lives in his house now and see if she'll let us record them in his living room? room where he probably wrote a bunch of songs and uh, kind of record these songs in a very communal style. And I think we definitely uh, captured that in a way that's true to maybe what Rich ap would have appreciated now if he was still making music. He was in the habit of, he had all these friends and they would all come for extended weekends and he, you couldn't even get in that room because there were so many instruments in there. And I thought, okay, this is my kind of crowd. It's kind of fun to, to be back here. Feels like when I was here, when Rich was, you know, his birthday parties and, hey, everybody just kind of hanging out. Welcome to our Amish paradise. He would send people here a lot. Um, he would send people without telling me. Yeah. <laughs> He wrote many a song in this house. Um, old, old uh, historical farmhouse, 120 years old. Uh, Rich bought it back in the 1980s. He wanted to get out of Nashville and live outside of town and uh, lived here for a few years before he moved out to Wichita, Kansas. And uh, I had known him, you know, way before he bought the house and he wanted somebody to take care of it for him while he was in Kansas. And so um, after going down his huge list of friends that said no, <laughs> I said yes. So I took care of the house for years and years and then when he passed away, his family made sure that I got it. And they have been very generous in many ways and still are. I'm still very close to his family. Well, my house came with company, and I, <laughs> I didn't realize that was going to happen. <laughs> um, and but it's it's been a lot of fun. Um, he would send all kinds of people here: songwriters, friends, hitchhikers, uh, you know, strangers. I have, would knock on the door and say, you know, I'm a friend of Riches. I'm in the neighborhood. I need a place to spend the night. You know. Say if I remember correctly, and Connie can correct me, I think she had two requests when, you know, she agreed to, to move into the house. One was that he would leave his dog, and yeah. the other was that he would continue to tell people they were welcome to stay. The doors were always open when he lived here, and they always have been. So, yeah, it's, it's everybody's house. It really is. I just happened to be the one to try to keep it standing. <laughs> When you were creating something or remembering something that was inspired by a certain life and the passage of that life and the, a part of that passage came through these walls, it kind of makes it, you know, hallow it in some ways and it can create a really uh, poignant environment for then celebrating that person or that person's music. That's what I like is that we're not in this house just to remember Rich, but we're here to help carry music that was inspired by Rich forward in a way that, at least in our great subjectivity, <laughs> think is the way that he was moving in his own musical endeavors, and that was one of kind of that Americana acoustic. Who knows if that would have been true? He may have gotten roped into a great record deal and made some really great pop music. It, it doesn't matter. This is what we perceive, what we understand, and it's cool to be able to run with that understanding. And from what I understand about Rich, again, not knowing him, I think he would like 
greatly in us not knowing and then trying. <laughs> so I think that's what we are doing. We don't know much, but we're trying hard. Holy Jesus, I'm shaking like a leaf. We all know, hold me Jesus, that which is like a one four. And with Rich, he just had these great ideas and then would reluctantly harmonize them. You know, I think that quality of his uh, his personal songwriting corner is just remarkable to me. Because he stumbled into all of the good, you know, all of the good tricks. Why that song? Couple, couple reasons. Um, one is that uh, we know it and have played it uh, a lot, quite a bit over the years, off and on. Um, and I, Ben and Andy and I used to tour, tour together, I mean, for a decade, probably at least. Um, off and on, and so um, that was the first one that popped into my head um, because I knew that we wouldn't have to spend any time rehearsing it. Uh, also, I suspected that no one else had done that, done that song, uh, because uh, it's just kind of a less, maybe less known song, but I think it is one of his most brilliant lyrics. Um, and I actually taught, uh, did a session on Rich's songs for a Rabbit Room conference for Hutchmoot, and kind of like did a deep dive to kind of help people see why he was great. And uh, and so it was the first time I had like sat down and like scanned the lyrics and like really like studied what he was doing rhyme wise. And that song is just, he's just a ninja. And like from a purely academic craft standpoint, I marvel at that one. Um, the rhymes that he's doing, the way the, the weirdness of the structure of it, how much he gets done in such a short amount of time and the beauty of the track. The track is, I think that's Billy Crockett playing acoustic on it and all of Reed's orchestral stuff, but it, I've always had a soft spot for that one. Um, and the, the last reason is that one of the, like what I was thinking about the whole time we were playing is what a joy it is to get to sing that song about the truth of forgiveness um, in, in light of the gospel and how rich, that, rich a thing that is. And like Ben and Andy and I have all had to forgive each other for a lot over the years, you know? And, uh, and what a joy it is that in Christ we get to make this music, still. You know what I love about all of the names before you get to the need? You're this, you're this, you're that. You know, it's like that, that helps me show my hand. It so is. it is so barefooted rich. <laughs> we really, we just liked each other. We hit it off. And then he gave me his first CD, his first record. You know, I just, I just wore it out. I just loved it. I loved Elijah. Obviously, I liked both feet on the ground a lot. But I just liked the whole thing because he was so original to me and so distinctive and so artistic. He sort of overcame whatever the production value was that that didn't work in some of the songs because he shone so clearly and I just love that so. You know, I was thinking about why do I want to do that song? And, um, you know, the, the thing that drew me into it in the beginning was, you know, the, I was young at that time in my life, and I thought, well, you know, is any person ever going to love me? Am I ever going to have anybody? And I, I think he was wrestling with some of those problems, too, despite sort of the confidence and the lyric. That was a reality for both of us, like thinking, you know, we're kind of weirdos, and um, is there somebody that's right for us, you know? And um, so there, for me, what I loved about it was there was, an, there was a longing in it. You know, on the top of the song, it's about being seen and known and loved by Jesus, but, then, but underneath it carried all of the human longing that we have to be seen and known and loved by another person. Heaven is waiting past the horizon Just over the mesas across the great divide Talking to Connie, 
One of the comments she made was just talking about how, oh, you guys are all so young, younger than the generation that you know he grew up impacting, and now she's being able to see uh, how even it's being passed down, this legacy, and it's communal in nature. More than writing a single song, if you can be a cultivator of community, I think that's pretty close to Jesus, in my opinion. I don't know that I would have even thought about doing it if if I wasn't like, oh, Jonathan and I could uh, play, do it together. Um, yeah, it's just because uh, he was kindergarten, I think, when Rich was killed, and so, but he does have a few memories, but, but like his whole life, both of my kids' whole lives have been really impacted by Rich. Uh, one is life and music, but then uh, also his death and all of the things that you know played out in in my life. Uh, so they kind of grew up through that, um, and it's always been fun to me to see Jonathan's engagement in music, and uh, he just loves it and, and has from from early on. Uh, so yeah, that that was really uh, yeah one of the re one of the reasons why I thought about it, and the other was just the okay, it's been 25 years, maybe I can sing on this album and. Um, for my own, uh, hey, I want to honor him and uh, and not be like, oh, who does he think he is doing something? So. I hope you feel the oceans crashing on the coast of North New England. What a a quirky, beautiful, perfect line, you know. So so, and then you know, uh, I um I, I love uh, songs that surprise me and and take a left turn you know and i think with all those images and stuff and then out of the blue he sings and the holy king of israel loves me here in america uh, i just love how surprising and perfect that is and, you know it's a privilege to get to sing it for sure and to get to sing it with jimmy abeck and what's so funny is that last week i was working on here in america because i i think it's a uh, it's a timely piece of uh, literary muse. Yeah. Uh, not to mention how brilliant the music is. The music is a very uh, Americana overlay. I mean, the whole this bit, yeah. and then alternating that with the mm. you know the the five. Anyway, I, I just think it's a really um, intelligent piece of music yeah you know yeah. this is just one of many fantastic songs although it should be noted too that uh here in america was one of those uh early in the morning we'd spent three weeks up in indiana and every day rich would say well here's one i don't know if you guys will like it and of course it's this incredible sketch and then during the course of the day the the group that was assembled would put their two cents in and by the end of the day we had a pretty bulletproof arrangement and would record it. And to me, I was telling Jason on the way out here that the the Liturgy Legacy and a Ragamuffin Band record stands out to me, not necessarily even because I had anything to do with it, although I'm grateful that I was in that room playing guitar on everything and mandolin and whatever Rich made me play. But um, it holds up to me as one of the strongest uh, efforts in that idiom mm. and you know we've we've all found ourselves either running from it or running towards it and as a benchmark goes it's pretty amazing you know the songs yeah. can be done on gut bucket they could be done on you know with the exception of the color green which is tricky on gut bucket but <laughs> do you know what I mean it had it has a weight and so when you called me and yeah. I think one of my first questions was what song and what key and that it's the same key it's the I mean we've played this song a lot right I, we meaning me myself and I and all of my collaborates in the, in the bands over the years but 
man, what a what a gem of a song. Yeah, really something. When I was 18 or 19, I was lost in the woods and heard Rich's songs and realized that Jesus was real and that he loved me. And I looked and there was this like moonlit path out, or not out, but forward. I took the hand of God Almighty to part the waters and the sea. He was just inviting everyone into seeing the world a different way, um, arguably the Jesus way, where everyone was radically welcomed. And here, 25 years later, we still don't get it. And we continue to cover and play and sing and celebrate. And I think Rich was all about that, you know, kind of trying to erase those lines so that everybody could come to a, a place where God loves me here in America, here in Gallup or wherever. You know. Yeah, pretty amazing. Here in Bellsburg. Here in Bellsburg. And I wonder what he's doing here. hanging out while we're all talking about him. I, I wonder if he's like this close going, lighten up. <laughs> I hate jazz chords. <laughs> yeah. um.